Last week on Mega Build Saturday, we built the gatehouse to our mountain castle. Today, we're going to build the keep. At least get started on it. Ladies and gentlemen, shepherds, fishmongers, and chocolatiers, welcome back to another Timo Redbeard video. Today, we're continuing our Mega Build Saturday Mountain Castle build. Last time, we what we built the gatehouse. And if you want to go catch that video before you watch this one, it's at the top of your screen right now. Go watch it because this is a continuation from it. Today, we'll be starting our progress on the keep. And it's a very, very big build. So this one's going to be split up into two parts this week and next week. Uh, because there is a lot to do when coming to build the keep. Uh, and a lot of fine work and a lot of hours to put into it. Before we jump in though, I do want to remind you that we have a Discord competition. Discord build competition going on. It ends on March 28th. There are Steam gift cards up for grabs. Join the Discord to find out more information and get your entries in. The other thing, of course, is the t-shirts. You have until tomorrow, if you're watching this on the day of release, for the 25% off launch deal discount. And then after that, it's going back up to full price. You can get a discount via being a Twitch sub, but you won't need to worry about that if you buy yours before tomorrow, or well, at the end of tomorrow. Let's jump into this. Enjoy. So we began today's build by terraforming, <laughs> it is as often the case. Uh, we needed to make the area ready for a keep to be plopped up on the top of this mountain side. So I found the correct height and I used uh, the passageway that we made last week to find the correct height, which is of course going to be two walls high plus a floor thickness on top, stone floor thickness on top. And once I'd done that, I flattened out both the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the passageway, giving us a nice large area to plop down our, or the front of our keep. Uh, now, the plans for this keep is that we're going to have four circular towers connected by exterior walls with uh, living spaces and armories and all sorts of bits and pieces found inside the towers and such. And then a central courtyard um, where we will have like our smithy and our forge and all of that sort of bits and pieces, our faux stables, etc, etc, etc. And so we're going to require a lot of space. Once the terraforming was done, I decided to go back down into the passage and spruce it up a bit. Of course, um, we didn't really touch the passageway too much other than just building it in the gatehouse build and I just wanted because we were now moving up to the other side of the passageway I wanted to get that looking nicer before we carried on with the keep so I found that I got a really nice um, balance of lighting with the sconces on the uh, sort of on the the stairs up in the passageway by aiming at head height um, and then just using the stairs to get the perfect distance um, from the stairs on each height, each level, just by staying at head height the whole way up, and then hitting the uh, or attaching the sconce every time we got a break in the stone walls. And then, of course, on the straight part of the passageway towards the top, I intermingled torches with shields up on the wall, and I used iron banded shields, and I used the three different styles and repeated them three times over. Um, making sure that they were the same shield opposite each other the whole way along and I think it looks really really nice I did want to use braziers um, to hang from the ceilings the problem is, is the braziers actually generate smoke like a campfire or a hearth does and I didn't want to have to make smoke holes in the roof of the passageway so we decided to step away from braziers and use torches and sconces Next up, it was time to place down the footprint of the front side of the keep. And to do this, I created the central portion first, and then I built stone circles away from that central portion. Now, 
this is the easier way to do it. I find that it's actually harder to make two circles and then place a central portion between them. So I like to have the central foundations down and then I can build the two circles that are technically incomplete circles off of the central portion as you'll see here. If you want an in-depth guide on how to make perfect stone circles, then click on the link at the top of your screen right now and that's a video to my guide on how to do it exactly. Now there are different ways that you can fill in a floor once you've made the circular outside but the way I prefer to do it is actually to carry on keeping the same grid pattern floor from uh, a normal square build and then just fill in the very edges. So I will fill in the circle as much as I can without clipping uh, or out too much clipping uh, using the regular grid build and then I will go around the circle again and build in floors from the outer edges that we'd already placed down and that ends up giving what I think is the nicest looking stone floor for a circular build. Now I, I feel like now is a pretty good time to chuck the disclaimer in. Uh, this build is being done in faux creative mode. I've got debug mode on, console commands, etc, etc, etc. This is because this build, if I try to complete this in survival mode without it, it would take me hundreds and hundreds of hours to do and I just I can't do that unfortunately and yeah, man, man's got to make a living um, so I hope you understand um, this the world that this is being built on is my YouTube world this is separate to my survival games um, I do keep them separate so that I don't uh, so that when I'm playing my survival games I, I don't use console commands or debug at all i don't have any inclination to do so and then when i'm on my youtube world i can use the creative mode and go wild anyway with the the floors done it's time to build up the walls of the keep now i am a sucker for stone walls that look really really good and the only way i can seem to make stone walls look really really good is a very time consuming method and that is to alternate uh bricks but of course, when you're doing a stone circular build, alternating bricks is a bit of a pain in the butt because you have these angles. Every two walls, you have these angles. And if you try to alternate normally, the angles would all be offset from each other because of the position of the bricks. So what I have to do is I have to use a combination of normal uh, two by one bricks and one by one bricks. And I, or every other floor, I have to do every corner with two one by one bricks. So it takes a while, but the end product looks incredible. At least I think so. Now, in order to make the roof of the each uh, keep tower be stone also, we're going to need to support it uh, from the inside. Now, you can get away if you want to, with just running iron beams up the walls and making a like crosshatch section or like a, a crosshatch across the roof made out of iron beams um, that are supported from the ground level that will be strong enough to place your stone floors on. But I'm more interested in the, the aesthetic of how it would be done. Uh, than I am just getting it done. So what I'm doing is I'm placing four stone pillars inside the tower and these four stone pillars are equally spaced and will go the whole way up. And these stone pillars will support the entire floor. And the way that they can do this is through the use of the half arch sections like the, the bracket sections and also by jamming walls into the outside wall and sort of like getting everything to squeeze against each other and hold each other up. Now I am strengthening this build with iron beams on these pillars. However, I'm going to hide them using core wood beams when I get to cleaning up everything and decorating uh, because as much as it works, I find the iron beams or iron poles just look a little bit out of place. Uh, and where it's like core wood or regular wood beams just look aesthetically much nicer uh, So and the, the beautiful thing is is that you can just plomp core wood poles Straight on top of ironwood poles and beams on top of beams and they hide them completely and they look a lot 
nicer. For the central section of the front side of the keep, I wanted to not just have a flat surface. I wanted to add a, another 3D surface to it. Uh, so I decided to go with uh, almost like a curved arrowhead. It's not a perfect curve. Um, it's like a perfect curve, but you cut out the middle section of it and then clump the two sides together so that there is a bit of a point. Um, and I actually ended up really, really liking how this turned out. Uh, and once I'd got the, the shape down on the ground, it was just a case of building that wall up. So skipping through the rest of this construction, because essentially it's the same thing over, I replicate the tower on the other side. I replicate the arrowhead on the back side. I do adjust the arrowhead slightly so that it can fit two wooden gates at the bottom but it's only a very, very slight adjustment. Now, unfortunately, the footage of me putting all the core wood beams up and making the fireplace on the inside of the keep uh, got corrupted. So, we <laughs> skipping through that, this is uh, what we have, uh, which is we've made a hole in the front of the central portion of the keep um, for the smoke to, to billow out of. Um, and we, we made quite a, a nice looking fireplace, uh, I think with a nice um, sort of uh, roof style thing to suck the smoke up and, and send it out the hole um, that also allows us to add more decoration and make the bring the room together. And the last part of today's build was just to build the wooden uh, walkway section that's going to peek out over the top of the first section of the keep. Um, and I did this by making the wooden floors connecting them with beams underneath to give them a show of support or such, making a nice canopy and then closing them in with a stone wall behind. I am genuinely really happy with how this build is turning out and I'm really excited to carry on working on it and carry on bringing more of this to you guys. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, consider subscribing and don't forget to caress that notification bell. Do come catch me on Twitch from Tuesday through to Friday starting at 1pm GMT. I'd love to see you there. Join the Discord in the description below. There you can find ways to enter into things like Pimp My Base, into Friday's Fantastic Force and also into the build competitions where Steam gift cards are up for grabs. If you would like to support me further, you can do that by either clicking the Patreon link in the description below or buying merch at corfmerch.com. I really, really appreciate any support you do give. And once again, if you do have any feedback or comments or criticisms or anything that you would like to talk to me about to do with this build before I continue with it next week, then do put your comments in the description below. I uh, in the comment section below. Sorry, I will have a chance to read them before I go on to record the next episode. So I would love to hear your ideas. What I will be doing at the end of this series is going over and re finessing or detailing the entire place with all your ideas and your different suggestions and such, and making the build look absolutely gorgeous. So please do chuck a comment below. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Peace out. Take care.